the betting, uh, the not so much uh, anymore is more down to my own fault. Uh, I need to uh, I need to get studying again to to get the edge back. But yeah, it's a great product. I love the exchange. It's uh, it's really it's uh, in my opinion one of the better bookmakers, if not the best bookmaker out there. Well, our first exotic at uh, Hollywood Bets Gravel on the Saturday will begin in race number two, and that will be at 11.40. It's over 1,400 meters. It's a juvenile plate. And uh, before we bring up the field, that barport bet needs to be on at 11.40, leg one of that barport race number two. Let's go to our package. Towards the outside, Active Genius. Coming out of the 200 meter mark now. Great Plains is putting in great strides on the inside with Havana Moon over the last hundred. Then comes Mr. Nobles and Discerning. But it's Great Plains over the last hundred from Havana Moon. Great Plains has won it. Havana Moon second, third is Mr. Nobles. Yeah, he, um, you know, his uh, first on the kennel with was a was, uh, good performance. Uh, it was extremely green, and uh, I thought, you know, you, you know, you'll need around a two for the penny to drop. But it was a, it was a very good performance. Uh, it's a stiff 1200, and uh, horse, I think they beat him, came out and won again. Unfortunately, we draw near 11, and uh, if you look at him confirmation-wise, he looks like horse will stay on. But we'll take our chances from from that draw. But he's doing he's doing very well, and uh, beautiful action horse. And I think he'll continue to improve. Big fella, but uh, he's doing well. We need a lot of luck from that draw. And, uh, but he'll, you know, as I said, he's a, he's a horse that will just continue to improve. But I'm, I'm very happy with his work back home. Well, there are some exciting juveniles that will take their place here in race number two over this 1,400-metre trip. And uh, there are some first-timers, or there's one first-timer in the race, which is horse number one. Now, that's priced up at any price. And when you look at the field, I think there is scope amongst uh, most of these runners in the race. Let's just touch on a few, uh, Ryle, before we can possibly try and narrow it down. We'll begin with horse number two, Ozanawe. Yeah, quid pro quo that uh, beat this footy last time out. She looks decent from Baron Borges. She certainly does, Dees, and uh, Ozanawe obviously took on winners that day. The, the horses that were winners finished first and second in that race, and... She's uh, back against winners here. Yeah, I think that uh, she's improving. I think that the step up to 14 will suit her, but uh, I think uh, that um, she may have to wait for another day to shed that maiden tag. This horse called Great Plains, we just saw the replay. Uh, you know, what? <laughs> I was amazed at the way she was allowed to drift out uh, come race time. But considering the barrier position she had to jump from, were you very happy with that win? I was... Uh, over the moon with the wind, Dees, and um, I watched that rerun a number of times, and I thought he won with a lot more in hand than what the winning margin does suggest of, of half a length beating Havana Moon. Now, what he beats, that's obviously questionable. The form line hasn't stood up to date, but I think all he could do was win on local debut, and he did that over 1,400 metres. He gets gate number four, he's been around the turn, so he's got the experience. And I think that uh, Richard Furry taking the ride here, I think that's obviously a positive. And for me, he's, he's a top selection. There isn't a lot to choose between him and Marco Zolo on, the, on that uh, little ballerina piece of form. But I think that uh, given that he has had a running case there and he has been around the turn, I would just favour him over stablemate Marco Zolo. And uh, based on running an arrangement, you would suggest that uh, it would suggest that Richard Free is on the right horse here. So I think he's going to go very close to notching up uh, his second victory and following up on on his uh, last start. Yeah, just my slight concern is uh, you know the strength of the form line, the lack of winners to come out of there. But uh, there've been nine runners in total, no winners. But all he could do was win the horse, and we'll see if there's more to come. A horse like Field Marshal, do you give him a blow? Uh, you know, we know that second buyer came out to win a work riders up in Gauteng. Is that form good enough to seem competitive? These are, I, I don't think it's, it's about the form. I think it's the man in which this horse knuckled down to actually get the job done, which was encouraging because uh, he had to go and fetch horses and he had to go and fetch more experienced horses that had been around the turn and, you know, they have their wits about them, whereas this horse is still learning about the game and... I thought the manner in which he won was quite nice and I definitely believe that there's more to come from the son of Lancaster Bomber. I think he may have to settle for a place here because I do prefer a few others in terms of the win but I think he could be a nice horse going forward and, and uh, Sid Moodley could have uh, quite a decent sort on his hands here. Well, you gave your thoughts on number seven, Marco Zolo. I know that Soho Star is very highly rated by Yoga's governor and I've had a word with the Yoga's and one of the owners, Colin Naidu, on a few occasions and they're expecting big things from the source. Well, he's, he's certainly uh, 
capable of, of producing something. He's just got that deep draw to continue with taking on horses that do have uh, Cape form lines, which are far superior than what he does race off. But um, all he could do was win last time out and did that beat in care for Gato. Our was terribly unlucky at her next start when finishing second to uh, you bring me joy and um, I'm keen to see when Care for God runs next time out. But so Star, I can definitely see him getting involved for traffic to Zan Quartets. Well, this horse from the Kanamea stable opened up at 33 to 10. That's been supported into 5 to 2. I will guarantee you that this horse will start much shorter than 5 to 2 come race time. All you need to do is pull out the replay of his debut and you will be wowed because Talk to the Masters, a very decent horse from the Vaughan Marshall stable. And we know that he's come out to win again. In fact, that strength of the form line will excite you. In fact, I make it the strongest form line to follow against these type of horses. Yes, he's still a maiden. And that's a big plus because he'll get a pull in the weights. Uh, I pull out his pedigree, Rael, the son of Rafif. He's a half better to Maria Carroll. Uh, winning four times from 1,400 to 1,800 meters. So the further, the better for this horse. 1,200 meters, too sharp. like this horse a lot. I'm actually going to give him five stars. Yo, so you, uh, you're definitely the one that's latched onto the 33 to 10. <laughs> yeah, you know, 33 to 10 seemed to be a very generous prize. So uh, the, when I looked at this field, I know that many will say, but it's a poor draw, it's 1,400 meters. Well, I think uh, all Craig Zanke needs to do is half the ride on a green with envy on a horse like this. I think his turn of foot will be too good for them. But I do respect your opinion on number four, Great Plains. As I mentioned, my concern there, Ryle, is the lack of winners and the strength of the form line. But this horse could have much more to come. I'm going to bank a 11 in everything. Awesome, 11. Right here now, the top choice here for D's in race number two. Perhaps um, another race where you can go box exact as numbers four and 11 in race number two. It is the start of the bar pot. D's in the cap of uh, number 11. And uh, I'm going to go with numbers, numbers four and 11 in leg number one of that bar pot at 11.40. It's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pearl Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.